Can we just take a second and talk about how messed up the job market is? Like how messed up our economy is, how messed up the world is, and companies are just doing layoffs and then rehiring the same people that they fired two weeks ago. And then Elon Musk is literally playing with people's livelihoods, people who are on visa, H-1B visas, that if they don't find a job within the next 90 days, they're kicked out of the country. The life that they built, that's five, 10 years that they spent. And then the green card is the whole sponsorship scenario. Your company has to sponsor you for your green card. And if they don't, then you're fucked. Then you're just basically having to renew every couple of years. And if your employer wants to fire you, they can fire you. People have so much power over you. And then there's pressure from hedge funds to reduce salaries. So hedge funds are literally pressuring their portfolio companies because they have a seat on the board. And they're saying, hey, fire all your employees, lay them off and then rehire them with a lower total comp. That's how you pressure and reduce the overall salary of the market so they end up burning less money and they get more ROI on their investment. That's just messed up to think about. And startups are shoving worthless equity down your throat. Literally every startup you apply to, every startup uh, that, that you like talk to, they're talking about equity. They're like, oh yeah, we, we want you to have skin in the game. We want you to be part of something big. 90% of startups fail. And out of the remaining 10%, barely any of them become a unicorn. Barely any of them IPO and actually provide any value. Most of the time when they have an exit, you don't even see much value. There was literally a company that I was reading about where they had an exit at a three, $400 million valuation, which is a lot. And people had 50, 100,000 shares. But you know how much they got from that exit after paying off all their credits, after paying off all their preferred shares? Each of them got like a fifty to one hundred thousand dollar bonus. That's it from a three hundred and four hundred million dollar exit. So just think about it for a second. Is a hundred grand gonna change your life? Let's just talk about all this for a second. I, I want to talk about a few more topics. Uh, one of them was interviewing is disconnected from actual work. Like literally, interviews are lead coding questions are like algorithms and data structures. Sure, you're gonna be using some form of data structures and maybe write a couple algorithms in production in actual software day to day work. But that's so far and few in between, most of it has been abstracted by several layers and libraries. If you write front-end code for React, let's say you're applying for a front-end position on Amazon and you're writing React primarily, chances are you probably never use a stack, probably never use a hash map. You might use a hash map here and there, but again, it's mostly abstracted. And you'll probably never have to do graph graphing problems unless you're actually building a graph. I don't know what to tell you. Like, there is so much problems going on with our job markets, with our software and tech market. There's so many issues that I want to talk about. Let's just dissect them one by one. So companies are literally doing layoffs and then rehiring the next week. And this is a very common trend. It happened with Tesla, it happened with Microsoft, it happened with Google, it happened with Amazon. Literally all the big tech companies are laying off thousands of people for a couple of months and then they come back and they, that's just the same people saying, would you like to come back? And they offer them a lower total compensation. And these people are on visas, so they have no option. If the whole market did layoffs, they run out of options. And they've built a career, they've built a profile in that company. So obviously they're going to want to come back, even if the total comp is lower. But me personally, I would be jaded. I would not take that offer. But that's me. Again, I don't know about you, but that's me. And then... Playing with people's lives, quite literally, hedge funds is pl pretty much playing chess with its employees. The employees are the pawns and the hedge funds are the chess master who's playing and, and, and making decisions based on hypothetical scenarios. And honestly, in their defense, it is helping them make money. Microsoft pulled all this shady stuff and their stock price is higher than ever. They're valued at two to three trillion dollars. So it's working. But the, the concept behind it is, is absolutely corrupt. Think about it. You're literally using humans as livestock. You're just strategizing, figuring out ways to get more return on investment, more return on your livestock. Like at the end of the day, they're, they're basically gambling with hundreds of thousands of lives in order to make a return on their investment. So I get it from a business perspective, but from an ethics and humanity perspective, it's really shady. And... The fact that hedge funds have so much influence over these companies, hedge funds have so, so much influence on things that they have zero knowledge about and products that they have zero insight on, but they're looking at it from a financial perspective. 
They're putting pressure. They have seats on the board. They literally are making decisions on behalf of these companies. The internal employees oftentimes don't have much say. So when you get mad at your team leader, your manager or director, 99% chance they're not making the decisions. The decisions trickle down from the top. The CEO isn't even making the decisions half the time. It's actually insane. It's the board members, the seat members. The seat members tells the CEO what to do. The CEO tells their VPs what to do. The VPs tell what directors what to do. Directors tell what team leads what to do. Engineering managers, and then the individual contributor. So you've literally went through nine layers of abstraction. So you can't necessarily blame your immediate manager for that situation, unless you're the CEO himself, but you don't see CEOs complaining because they're making two to $3 million a year. So it doesn't matter. And what is up with startups just shoving equities down your throat? Like your equity is worthless. Like, I'm sorry, like the chances of your company succeeding is extremely low. And you might say, oh, we're different. We're a, a team, blah, blah, blah. There are hundreds of startups with a team. There are hundreds of startups with absolutely smart and amazing people. Just in terms of probabilities and odds, the likelihood of your success is closer to zero than it is to 100. So that's actually closer to 10%. So just put that into perspective. So when you expect employees to work harder because you've vested some equity in, into them and gotten their skin in the game. Listen, if you're a public company, your equity is basically cash. So you're giving cash. Fine. But if you're a private company, your equity is worthless. Pay them cash. That's the one and only thing that will motivate them. And the disconnected interviews, I don't understand the point of creating this whole interviewing industry of lead code. Lead code, the, the product lead code literally came out of this issue because people are not able to use their work experience to qualify for the job. If you're a carpenter and you're the best carpenter in the world, you don't have to fucking learn how to uh, swim to be able to land a carpenting job. It's completely unrelated. So why is it that software engineers who are good at building front end websites or back end systems or scalable architecture have to do something completely unrelated, which is lead coding, you have to solve medium to hard level problems. I don't understand that. That's one thing I'll never understand. I get it from a scale perspective. It's a quick and dirty way to filter out hundreds of thousands of applicants. So that's probably all it is. It's just a way to filter out the livestock. And so maybe I'm not thinking about this at a scale. Maybe I'm thinking about this at a, at a very small perspective. I'm thinking about this from 10, 20, 50, 100 employee company perspective. I haven't run a thousand employee organization or a hundred thousand employee organization. Maybe I will one day and maybe I'll completely change my mind. But I think the whole big tech industry is just broken right now. And I think, the, I think the tech industry in general has a lot of issues and a lot of concerns. And honestly, this is great opportunities for people to start solving these. And this is what will make you millionaires. So try to solve a couple of these problems and you might be the next billionaire or millionaire. I don't know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.